In this lesson, we're going to be talking about and introducing the second derivative test. So the second derivative test is we can get information about maxes and mins actually from the second derivative. So second derivative exclusively talks about concavity, but it also can imply that we have some other information going on. So here's the idea that if we were to do the first derivative, you have to do the first derivative to get to the second derivative. If we do the first derivative, set it equal to zero and get our critical points. Our second derivative is going to tell us whether we have maxes and minimums at those critical points. So if we have the second derivative is continuous on an open interval containing some point, and that point is a critical point to the first derivative, so it was where your first derivative was zero. Uh, if we take that critical point and plug it into the second derivative, we're either going to get a positive value, a negative value, or a zero. So if it was a negative value, that means we had a concave down situation at that critical number, which means we have that shape going on with a slope of zero, then it had to have been a maximum, right? If we did the same thing, we plugged in that same critical value and you got a positive concavity, right? Then it's going to have that look, which means we would have had to have had some sort of a minimum. And then if you plug it in, you get a zero, it's inconclusive. Right, So it does give you a little bit of information that we had to have a maximum at that critical number. If it was concave down, we had to have a minimum at that value if it was concave up. So a little bit of a summary is if we have um, first derivative, if it's greater than zero, we have increasing sections. If it's less than zero, we have decreasing sections. If the second derivative is greater than zero, we have concave up. Second derivative is less than zero, we have concave down. And then if you put some pieces together, where we have a critical number at x when our slope is zero and it's positive means we have concave uh, up. And so we are going to have some sort of a relative minimum there. If your critical value plugged into the second derivative is negative, it's concave down, which means we have some sort of a maximum happening. All right, so let's use that information and let's find the second derivative test to figure out where our local extremas are. Right, so uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do our derivative of this. So if we do the derivative of this, we're going to get a 12x cubed minus a 12x squared minus a 12x plus 12. And then we still need our critical numbers on this. So we'll take this and set it equal to zero. x squared minus 12x plus 12 equaling to zero. We did this on a recent example um, in this section where we were trying to find our um, slopes, our critical number. Um, so we set this equal to zero, our derivative. Um, sorry, we did that. Set it equal to zero, our critical numbers are, we factored out this and we factored, factored, factored. We got our critical numbers to be negative one, one, and one, right? So just gonna put a little bit of a, we worked through that on a previous example. And so our critical numbers were negative one, one, and one. All right, so that is where our slopes are zero. So now we're gonna use the second derivative. Um, and figure out concavity, and that concavity is actually going to tell us whether we have maxes and mins. So um, let's see. So if we do the second derivative of this, we're going to get a 36x squared minus 24x minus 12. And so if we, um, we don't need to set this equal to zero, we don't need to figure out any critical numbers on that. All we're going to do is take our second derivative and plug in our critical numbers, All right? So if we plug in a negative one and we do this math, uh, I would get a 48 here, which means it's positive. So this piece is concave up at negative one, which means we had to have a minimum at that spot. And then if we plug one into this, we actually would get a zero, which would mean it is inconclusive. 
because actually it's an inflection point. Um, so an inflection point is not going to be a max or a min, so it really doesn't give us any information. So we have at minimal a relative max, could be an absolute max, but I'm sorry, a relative min. We have a relative min at x equals negative 1. All right, so that is called a second derivative test. And it is taking the critical numbers from the first derivative, taking and plugging them into the concavity uh, equation, which is the second derivative, and just figuring out whether it's concave up or concave down, which will then lead us to whether we should be having maxes or mins at that point. 